Hi, everybody. We're back. We're live at the Minnesota State Fair having a grand old time out here. You guys having a good time? I'm sorry we don't have enough of Lauren's Bunt cake to go around. I know. I was thinking that. We should have one of our crew members cut a piece for everybody here, Of huh? Lauren's cake. Well, no. Yes. All right, let's talk a little weather, <laughs> shall we? We wouldn't want to do that to where, people. Where is our chief meteorologist, Ken Barlow? Well, look, we have Chris I'm and the Red. I'm the one on the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one with the white hair. Why are these cardboard cutouts so much fun? I'm older than you by two times. <laughs> What? Is Ken here or is it a cardboard oh, cutout? Oh, there's guys. the real Ken Barlow. It's me. Sorry to disappoint you. Cardboard cutouts I am here. never get old. How are you? Old. I'm good. I'm watching a little line of shower to get really geeky. Yeah. A line of showers up by uh, Alexandria getting toward oh. Alexandria anyway. Yeah, I see him. Dada, that we'll be watching for the later on this afternoon. Could get an isolated one. Let's look. Ooh. Can I get the that cardboard cutout back? Can you what? Can we get the cardboard cutout back doing the weather? Do you want it to shut up? <laughs> what a dork. You should see how he treats me when he's not in front of people. That was nice. Uh, anyway, this is the area I'm looking at right here, uh, out by 94. That's Ottertail County. And that little area of showers right there is slowly moving down 94. So that's still several hours away if it does make it to the Twin Cities. Uh, we can see it, can't really see it on this map. It's right there, right at the top. Uh, over by east of Fergus. That's where the rain is right now, or at least the showers. We could see a very brief shower between noon and two. Uh, maybe a thunder shower. You can always come in here if it does shower, just for an hour or so, and then it'll go by. Uh, 75 degrees in the Twin Cities, 70 at Hinkley. It's upper 60s at Duluth. You know, the other day when it was 98 degrees here, well, for two days, it was only 61 at Duluth and only in the mid-60s at Grand Marais is kind of the way it goes, right? The dew point is still high. Now, this isn't as high as the other day. The other day, the dew point was up at 78 to 80 degrees. That's really as high as it gets around here. That tells us how much moisture there is in the air. And when it gets that high, it's really gross. It's really tropical. Well, when it's 68, you can feel it out here. It's still muggy. It's just not quite as muggy as it was uh, during the day on Tuesday and during the day on Wednesday. So uh, things are looking good for the rest of the day, except for that one hour, two hour window when we could get a shower. Temperatures today near 84, 77 tomorrow. Now there'll be some clouds in the morning, then it's gonna turn beautiful. Uh, 78 on Sunday, absolutely gorgeous and sunny. And look at this, all next week into Thursday, looking really, really nice. I'm gonna go over there and join these guys. Da, 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 da. Yeah, come over here, Ken. Come we on over, a Ken. delectable I'm delight coming, for coming. you to get to try. It is time for Try Before You Buy. And we love doing this at the fair. Some very nice vendors. This sound good to me. Oh, oh this no, sounds so it good to so me. so good. No, Chris and I were walking around yesterday, and we walked by this place, and I was like, dill pickles and cheese curds, two of my favorite things combined into one? Let's give her a shot. That's All what right. we said. These come from Richie's Cheese Curd Tacos. You guys take a bite while I describe what they are. Okay. Don't be shy, Ken. Well, describe what they are first before I bite it. It's a cheese curd taco. <laughs> they were here last year, but the fact that there's there they are an official new food this year because there's the pickle. So it's fried white cheddar cheese curds. Oh, I like that. Sandwich stacker dill pickles, cream cheese, lettuce, and raspberry chipotle sauce in a fried flour tortilla. Now, all of those sound absolutely delicious to a part. No, they sound delicious together. What's crazy uh, I'm gonna is, find out. it's super it yummy. It really tastes awesome all together. They did a really good job of blending these different flavors that I, oh, heck yeah. I'm not quite sure how that even worked. I was mm. a little worried about the chipotle sauce, the there? raspberry. I think it's amazing, really? Oh. Good, oh I'll eat God. your extra. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sharing this with people today. This is good. I mean, you know how when you come to the fair, it's you a get something too, and share? Not this. It, it, it it's was really rich. good until I got the dill pickle, which I love. Mm. It's very with rich. With, like, grilled cheese and other stuff. The flour tortilla, the yeah. cream cheese. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Which camera this are we on? This is my jam. Which camera can I pout to? All right. <laughs> so here's the deal. So Richie, two out of three for sure here, right? Richie's That's where we're at. Cheese curd tacos are at Judson Avenue, just outside the Sheep Barn. So if you want to try this. Well, that's why. I give it two thumbs up. I think <laughs> you should. Outside the Sheep Barn. I think that's where you can find it. Good. Uh, hey, speaking of pickles, coming up Monday on Minnesota Live, the food and dining editor at Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine, Steph March. She's going to be stopping by oh, with Pickle Palooza. Other 
pickle-related flavored products that are all around the fairgrounds this year. Ken might request he not be here for that. Uh, well, maybe. That's fine. Uh, so let's really, let's really up the ante and where we really need to have some Pepsi or some Tums or something here. Because we're going to go from this to some beer. We've got beer flights coming into the uh, Five Eyewitness News building. A special exhibit here. God, Chris. A rotating menu of beer. So He's good. just an animal. And we're going to sample some of it. Some hometown brews when Who we come back. You? <laughs> you really? Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Minnesota State Fair. A big thank you to our crowd here who's assembled and just absolutely lovely. Great to have you guys with us thank today. Thank you, guys. I know you think you're getting samples of what we have here, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure we don't have enough to go around. Dar we have the cake, the big giant bunt. Well, that's bunt. true. You'll we get some of Lauren's bunt cake bunt after the show. <laughs> uh, we've got beer from the Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild. Their Brewed in Minnesota exhibit is at the Agriculture Horticulture I kind of feel like we started this wrong. Like, we should have had the tacos, then the beer, and then the dessert, but we started dessert first. Or we start with the beer. Yeah, for sure. But whatever. Anyway, we, we're getting to the beer third on our list today. We want to welcome uh, in Bob Galligan. He is the Director of Government and Industry Relations for the Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild. Bob, thanks for being here with Thank us. Thank you so much for having us. We're happy to be here. Tell us about the Guild a little so bit. So the Guild uh, started in uh, 2000, and basically we're just there to promote and protect uh, all the brewers' rights and really support the craft beer industry across the state and across the state. We represent over 180 breweries in the state here um, from all over. So The craft brewing thing has really become such a uh, a phenomenon over the yep. last 10 years or so. Uh, the thing that I like about it the most is that a lot of the brewers seem to really work together 
and enjoy a camaraderie versus yeah. uh, some of the competition that you see at some of the national bottlers? Yeah, I mean, on a local level, you definitely have competition to a certain degree, but at the same time, we're all in this together. A, a, a rising tide lifts all ships. That's always been the case for craft beer. Um, you know, that's part of what I really, really love about this industry. If somebody runs out of malt, you can call the brewery right down the store or right down the block. They'll get you a bag. Uh, it's very, very nice, and, and we share a lot of information. We get together every couple of months to talk about techniques and everything. So. Tell us about the exhibit here at the fair. What can people yeah. see? Who can they talk to? What can they experience? It's the uh, Brood in Minnesota exhibit. We've been in the agriculture, horticulture building now for a couple of years. Uh, and people can come, and we have presentations every single day at 11 and 1, ranging from women in the industry and, and what that means to them. We have hop experts from the University of Minnesota, history of beer, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but obviously, the main draw is the beer. The beer. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we do flights at our exhibit. So you pay $13, you get a flight, four different beers. Um, the really fun part, it's, it's definitely the most expansive selection of beer at the fair. Mm -hmm. uh, we ordered over 470 kegs. There's over 200 signature beers. Um, so if you come at 10 a.m. Uh, here today, you can get a flight. If you come back at 4 p.m., it'll probably be a different flight. So you can kind of choose, and you can try different beers from all over the state. One of the cool things about our exhibit is actually brew pubs can't distribute outside of their location in Minnesota, but we actually passed a law that allows us to buy their kegs oh. and serve them here at the fair, so people can try, uh, so people can try even can. brew pubs from way up north that you'd never been to. Awesome. You can try their beer. So. All right, so tell us about the flights that you brought for Chris and I to try. Yeah, so uh, these are four of the beers that uh, we do actually have on some of our flights. Uh, the first one, number one, there is going to be Tom's from Falling Knife That's on here. top left All there. Right. Um, this beer actually no, won no, no, you have on that own. one. Yeah, Yours is this one. <laughs> This beer won the uh, Best in Show for the 2023 Brewers' Cup. So uh, a panel of judges voted this the Best in Show out of all the entered beers from breweries across the state. It's an American lager, super light, good, super easy. Good super summer light. beer. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So it's easy, right. easy drinking. A good entry beer for somebody who maybe doesn't know whether they 100%. even like craft beer. So. It, it's called Tom's with two M's for a reason. It's very reminiscent of a certain St. Paul brand. Uh, I know which one you speak hailed of. from the, the land, land of sky, sky blue, blue waters. Water. Yeah. Indeed, yes. So it uh, hopefully reminds you of that. Uh, number two, we Next have uh, Oudipil's Ewald the Golden. This is going to be a, Bavaria, a Bavarian Hefeweizen, so it's going to be a little bit of banana, a little bit of clove. Uh, this is going to be reminiscent of like a, a blue moon. A um, little bit. I can totally yes. taste that clove. Yeah, you taste good. that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's that's all coming distinct. from the yeast. Uh, yeah. Hefeweizens are very interesting because it's not hop driven, it's not malt driven, it's actually yeast flavor driven. Uh, so all of those phenols are coming actually from the actual fermentation process. This would be kind of a, if you go to Oktoberfest type beer yeah. that you might experience. It's Bavarian in style, yeah. so it is very, very German and traditional, very uh, as Udapils does a, a fair amount. All right, uh, next up. Third beer, one of the more popular ones. Um, this is going to be Miraculum, which is the Midwest IPA from Prize uh, out of Minneapolis. Um, it's a pretty standard. A lot of tap walls across the cities will have this. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a Midwest, so it's not West Coast, which is going to be more bitter. It's not East Coast, which is going to be more like fruity and tropical. It kind of hits that somewhere in the middle. It's supposed Midwest to be really, really is cold balanced. For not quite as flavorful in a good to way. A, to a degree not as aggressive no, i would yeah, say not yes as aggressive it's yes. very good but yeah, yeah a little uh, hard edges off this. yeah 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 still easy drinking for sure very uh, good. but definitely uh, in the alley for someone who likes an ipa all right and then, i'm most excited about this if last you like one. darker beers yes like this. Um, this is going to be no. oh, this good. is going to be a cold pressed black which is a black ale with coffee added into it from bent paddle up in duluth you can smell the coffee super super coffee driven yes 100 percent. and the thing with a lot of the darker beers you're using dark malt, which is going to be roasted just like coffee is. That's where you get a lot of those mm. coffee, chocolate type characters and stouts and porters. Um, this amplifies that just by adding actual Duluth coffee to it. I feel like this is a sipping beer. Oh, and for sure. This first beer, you yes. can have like three cans. Any beer is a sipping beer, and any beer is a chugging beer. It all depends on what time of day it is. You, my yes. man, should work for the Craft Brewers Guild. I do. I do indeed, yes. Bob, that thank you so awesome. much. No, thank you so much for having Thanks me. Thanks for stopping yeah, by. Happy fair. Again, you can stop by the exhibit. It's located in the Agriculture horticulture building. So, Bob, thanks for bringing this by. There's much more to come here on Minnesota Live. As we go to break, we're going to test your state fair knowledge for a quick second. Are you ready? We've got a fair fact for you. And this is today's question. When did the giant slide first open in 1969? And how much did one ticket cost? Was it a dollar? Was it 50 cents? Was it 25 cents? <gasps> Or was it a nickel? All right, hold your answers. You'll find out.
You'll find out. Well, you'll find out when Minnesota Live returns. Well, hi, everybody. We're back here, Minnesota Live. Do you have a guess ready for today's fair fact? When the giant slide first opened in 1969, how much did one ticket cost? I'm hearing a lot of 50 cents. What was it? Two bits, 25 cents. Did you guys know that for more than 50 years, fairgoers have climbed the steps to the top of that iconic five-story attraction? It takes all of five seconds to get down, so they make you work to get to the top at 100 steps. Five seconds, five humps, and boom, you're down at the bottom. Have you done that yet? I have not, actually. I've done it. It's actually a lot of fun. You've done it, Hannah? Yes. yes. I have a yeah. fear of my skin getting caught on that thing and, like... That doesn't happen. No. Even on a hot day. No, 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 you're good. All right. Today it'll cost you. I'll put you that on my list for when I have grandkids. <laughs> Today it'll cost you four dollars to go down that slide. It went from twenty-five cents to four dollars. There you go. There you go. All right, we're joined now by Five A Witness News Morning Traffic Reporter Hannah Conway. Yay! Okay, you guys. So we posted a, pic a picture of Hannah and her family and yes. said, you know, what advice do you have for Hannah coming out to the state fair? And you got a lot of advice from viewers. There was a lot of advice. <laughs> and I I'll just say this. I'm a first time mom. I'm a new mom. And I posted about it before. I do have, or and I did have a lot of anxiety taking Brady places. But when I was started looking into taking him to the fair, I realized it's doable and not only doable, but you can have fun. You can have fun while doing it, a fun family outing. And so this is Brady's first fair. He's he looks three like and a half he's months old. Hi, Brady. 
Hi. Hi, buddy. Do you have anything to say? He can he can mumble and talk, but he's a little camera shy right now. He's very <laughs> chill. I like it. I, I like it. I, it's kind of a wild card. So if you're thinking about taking your kids to the fair, I got some advice. I talked to the Minnesota State Fair, and uh, this is what you need to know. Okay. All when right. you go online to buy tickets, or maybe you're buying tickets at the gate, kids four and under get in for free. Yes. F R E E. Every parent loves that word. Yes, so they do. Four and under getting free. Older kids get discount days. There are a few discount days throughout the year, one of which includes Labor Day. So you don't have to worry about paying for the littles to get in. When you get in, you can get these wristbands. This is such a great idea. This is an awesome idea. These are ID wristbands. You can get them near the entrances, and you can fill out your information, tuck it into the into the wristband and you can put it on that put it this is great for toddlers yeah. other kids so if you get separated someone knows who they can call this is also good for, it's vulnerable good for your husband adult husband <laughs> anyone that you need to keep track of and so and they also say you should you could take a picture of them right away so you have a picture readily available smart. if anything happens when we went to disney world my husband used sharpie and wrote on the kids stomachs our phone number in case that you got to do uh -huh. what you i did that do. with the Get twins the game wristbands. i yes. had like 15 <laughs> kids when not mine are younger, yes. I have 15 kids. I wrote my phone number on every single not one of them, kid, yeah, like right across their arm. This is Gotta a stay nicer safe. way to go, I think. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to strollers and wagons, because you need those, collapsible strollers are allowed inside the fair buses. Uh, and we did that when we came here, and there was no issue through security. You can also rent strollers and wagons near the entrances as well. And then when it comes to feeding, there are three different breastfeeding areas at the State Fair, That's one nice. of which includes the My yeah. Talk building and Twin Cities PBS. All include electricity, and I'm told they have changing tables there as well. Speaking of changing tables, yes, that's on your mind. I actually had to change little Brady Bear back there. Smells um, fine right now. Okay, <laughs> it was just number one, not number two. Um, there are changing stations located around the fair and family restrooms. They're marked on the fair map, so you can pull out the map, find which one's closest to you. Moms have also said they they can just change they just change them in the stroller as well. Do what you got to do. Look and at the little boy. He likes being it. on TV, Hannah. Look at him. I know. I'm a little he scared likes about being on this. TV. <laughs> what do you have to say, little bear? And then when it comes to food and water, you can bring outside food and food and beverages into the fair. You can bring bottles. You can bring formula. You can bring that water and snacks for the kiddos so they're, they don't go hungry, even though there's a lot of options here at the fair as well. And lastly... I think we can just all lower our expectations. That's what I did going in to today with him because you're not gonna maybe spend a full day. Maybe we'll get a few hours. They'll let you know when you're ready to leave. Take photos, have fun. It's gonna be a different experience, especially if Sorry. it's their first fair. So what advice do you two have? Season uh, parents. When I had my little ones, they're now almost 12, we came early in the morning and we were done by about noon. Yes. It's just cooler. There are fewer people. Mm -hmm. It's easier to maneuver the stroller, all that kind of good stuff. And again, yeah. low expectations. Yes. What about you? Enjoy it all. <laughs> Every moment. Oh. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you. Because they go to college. Chris's oh. son just went off to school. He just went off to Do college. Do you need to hold Brady? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. It goes. So I'm not crying. It, you're crying. It goes. It goes so <laughs> fast. I know. It goes way We're too so fast. Glad you and, came out. Oh, thank you. I am super excited, and we'll check out the 4-H. And he's a star, star, man. He was great <laughs> in this whole segment. Not a peep. Yeah. All right, we've got some farm animals to check out coming yeah. up for you right after this.
Well, hi, everybody. We're back here. It is time for our Five on the Farm segment where we introduce you to a new animal every single day. Yeah, today's animals are from the 4-H building. We have Sam and Faith with us today, and they brought a couple of animals. Thanks, you both, for being here. Sam, let me start with you. Tell us about your turkey. Uh, he's six months old, and I showed him at the county fair and the state fair this year. And how did he do? He did okay. 